Hello, today I'm going to take you through Acme Air with uh, the Netflix enablement running in Docker Local. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see my Acme Air web app and auth microservice running in Docker on my laptop. Um, it's actually running across three different emulated availability zones, Local 1A, Local 1B, and Local 1C. Every time an instance comes up, it's going to talk to Eureka and register so they can locate each other. The front end load balancing of this entire environment is done through Zool, also talking to Eureka. Um, for the management and operations, you can see that we have Asgard and it's talking to an auto scaling service that can do auto recovery. The kind of key to see here is everything that's in a light blue box is actually a Docker container that we've created Docker files for and we're going to go show you how to launch. So I'll go ahead and start the minimum configuration of this environment. So this will start my application as well as all the Netflix infrastructural services around it. And I'll go ahead and get this started. And it's starting up uh, Cassandra and waiting for Cassandra to come up. Now it's loading up Cassandra with data. And it's starting up the auto scaler, waiting for the auto scaler to start up. And once the auto scaler is up, it'll go ahead and define the auto scaling groups for the web app and the microservice. And there you go. And that's just really kind of cool. You can see that within a little less than two minutes, we set up all the services that the application depends on as well as the application starting up all those containers very quickly and getting them interconnected. So if I come over here to the application, you can see it's the basic Acme Air. I can go ahead and log in. I can use the application. I could ch check in for flights. And you can see that the rest of the Netflix environment is supporting this application. If I switch over here to Eureka, you can see that in Eureka, I've got Zool up and I've got two instances of the web application and two instances of the auth service running. And I can also show you that we've got multiple availability zones emulated here. So if I do a Docker and I inspect just one of the auto-scaled instances. There's its IP address. And you can see in its user data, it's told that it's running in Docker Local Availability Zone 1A. Now this is all sort of under the covers of Eureka and, and the auto-scaler and looking at things uh, in Docker Local uh, directly, but if you want the DevOps view, this is where Asgard comes into play. So as before, you know that Asgard can manage Amazon, and with the work that we did uh, at IBM, it also can manage the IBM Cloud software. And for this demo, we're going to switch it over to a new region that is Docker Local, which is my laptop. I can go look at the applications and you can see that I've got the web app application and the auth service application. I can look at images and we need to do some shortening up of the IDs here but you can see all the images are out there and this is calls to the Docker local uh, APIs from Asgard. I could instead go into instances and let me go into one of the backend microservices Let's go into one of the instances there. And you can see I can get the IP address. I can see its health checks status and whatnot. More interestingly, I can go into the clusters and let's go into the off service cluster. And you can see it's currently at a min of two, max of four. And let's go ahead and jump into one of the instances. 
So I'm going to highlight this instance ID and copy it for part of the demo coming up. And for this part of the demo, I want to do some of the reason for why we did this work. So we wanted to be able to allow people to test locally things like elastic scaling and chaos testing. So here what we're going to do is we're going to do some very rudimentary chaos monkey testing where I'm going to take that instance of the auth service and I'm going to go ahead and kill it and watch and make sure the application continues to run and the system auto recovers that instance. So if I come over here and say docker inspect on that instance, it should be the .10 address. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that instance. But to show you what's going on, I'm going to show you the health manager log. Okay, so what this is showing you is that it's tracking right now as part of the auto scaler. The health manager is tracking that there's two different clusters, the auth service and the web app. And you can see that for each of them, it's targeting to have two running and it says the actual right now is two. So when I stop it, what you should see is you should see that go down temporarily. You should see a new instance launched and it replaced this uh, instance that I'm killing. Now it's going to take a little bit of time for the health manager to time out. And you can see now it's detected that it's a stale instance at 1427. And it, once it realizes that instance is not coming back, it'll go ahead and realize that now there's an actual of one, a target of two. It'll scale that auto scaling group back up, start an instance, and you can see in about 30 seconds, we're back to an actual fully working cluster. So now if I do a Docker PS grab off, you can see I'm now back up to two instances, one of which replaced the one that I killed. So hopefully this shows you how with this work to enable the Netflix environment on top of Docker local, we can do testing in a full-blown environment that mirrors very close to production in terms of your microservices, your web applications, all interconnected with Eureka, all doing front-end load balancing, um, all of that managed through an auto-scaling service, uh, which is configured uh, both via Asgard and directly down to uh, Docker Local. So you can get your DevOps view of your Docker Local environment just like you would uh, in a full cloud environment. Thank you.